Our verse today is 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. Paul writes this second letter to the Thessalonian church, urging them to embrace a disciplined life of personal responsibility and communal integrity. The Christians were already facing the pressures of intensified persecution, and in anticipation of the Lord's Day, some members of the church had become idle, relying on the charity of others while neglecting their responsibilities. As the saying goes, an idle hand is the devil's workshop. Many idle Christians became busybodies, meddling in other people's businesses, gossiping and causing trouble. In this brief letter of three chapters, Paul reminds the Thessalonians of their Christian duty to live as responsible, hardworking, and self-supporting community members. He warns them in verse 6 to keep away from believers who are idle and destructive. They should be avoided because Christians following Christ are not lazy people. They are not idle or busybodies. He emphasizes the value of work as a fundamental aspect of our Christian life. Work is not only a means of sustenance, but also a participation in God's creative ministry. In John chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus says, My father goes on working, and so do I. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, God placed man in the Garden of Eden to work and care for it. God never made us lazy or idle, but to be creative, active, and hardworking. This is why Paul says, imitate our example. For when we were with you, we were not idle. Thus, anyone unwilling to work shall not eat. It is important to note here that Paul says the one who is unwilling to work and not the one who is unable to work. Some people cannot work due to illness, disability, or other legitimate reasons. However, Paul challenges those capable but have chosen idleness and laziness. Paul warns the community to avoid them because their actions or inactions affect the community as a whole. While Paul was not against spirituality, prayers, or even belief in the Lord's coming, he invites us to reflect on the spiritual dimension and benefit of work. We can, therefore, examine ourselves to see if we fully engage with the gifts and opportunities that God has given us. Are we contributing to the well-being of our families, communities, and the church? Are we using our time, our talents, and resources in ways that honor God and serve others? In a world where work can sometimes be undervalued or exploited, and where some Christians have chosen to spend the most productive times of the day and week in houses of prayers and churches instead, seeking extraordinary miraculous actions to instantly transform their poverty into wealth while living on others for help, Paul reminds us of the dignity and purpose of labor. He believes in the balance of prayer and work, not just as a necessity, but as a vocation. As Psalm 128 verse 2 says, By the labor of your hands you shall eat. Therefore, let us graciously embrace our call to work, seeing it as participating in God's mission of love and service to the world. This inspires us to find the balance between our spiritual and earthly duties and to see our work as a vocation that serves God's mission. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the gift of work and creativity. Help us to appreciate the work of our hands and to see it as part of our service to you, to our communities, and to the world. Also, bless those who seek jobs and work opportunities, those who seek promotion in their offices and success in their businesses. May we find joy and dignity in contributing to our world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you and I wish you a lovely day.